Come on down, Mr. Christopher. Alright. Definitely like that. Just let me say a warm good afternoon to one and all. It's a very, very good thing to be in Atlanta, to be in Fayetteville, Atlanta. Um, I gotta say very much thanks to Mr. Arby Padmore for basically bringing all this together. Yes. I know that he was working feverishly in the background for over a year trying to ensure that all of us here are here today and that all of us here will enjoy today and he brought me along to ensure that all of us here will drink a little wine today also all right and so i'm just going to start by giving a little background of how i actually got in to the whole wine business to the whole wine industry um I have been in the hotel, hospitality industry, restaurant industry for 15 years plus now. Um, I'm not that old. I think that every year, which is my birthday, I become a year younger. But I'm just saying that to say that all I have been doing from the time I finished school was basically in the hotel, in the restaurant, in the hospitality circuit. Now, I believe everything has to gel together. I've been listening to all of the motivational speaking that's been going on, and I think that everything in all lives, from what I've heard, have just gelled together. And only one person could have made those things gel together, and that's God. Aubrey. Okay. And Aubrey, in extension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is, um, I don't want to say, like God, but it's very godlike, right? Yes. right? Yes. Now, in the hospitality industry, you get to meet a lot of different nationalities. You get to deal with a lot of different nationalities. You get to deal with a lot of different uh, persons, whether they be wealthy, whether they be poor. You get to deal with their groans, their, their needs, their wants, and some of them, you need to deal with them now. There are certain individuals which I've dealt with in the past that are quite wealthy than others. And being that they have a bit of money, per se, when they ask for something, they like it to be done now. But hey, that's the industry that we're in. I've worked for a general manager who I've always said to me, Chris, I never want to hear any of my staff say they don't know. And at that point of the time, I was the restaurant manager here. So it's, it's basically to say that you cannot ever live by I don't know. If someone asks you a question and you don't know, you find out. You would just say in the hospitality industry, just give me a second sir or ma'am and I'll get right back to you. And you go and find out. But I always try to pride myself on product knowledge. And this is where it gets very, very interesting within the hotel and restaurant industry. All of us here would have dined out already at some point of time, even if it's just at McDonald's, even if it's Wendy's, even if it's, you know, just at a pizza place, Domino's. You know, we would have dined out at some point of time. But it gets a bit more interesting now, and it elevates a bit more when we actually go to fine dining restaurants and fine dining restaurants with in four star rated or five diamond rated or five star rated hotels where you are looking for that level of service and you're looking for that level of service from the time you enter the hotel or from the time you enter the restaurant now some of these hotels and some of these restaurants are quite expensive some persons actually have to save to go to some of these restaurants or some of these hotels for a little while, you know, perhaps they're celebrating their anniversary, perhaps they're celebrating a, a birthday, perhaps they're just um, celebrating something nice and they decide, you know what, let's go here, we've never been to anywhere nice, you know, let's dress up, let's go here, let's have a fantastic night. Now, this is where it all gels together now. You come to this restaurant, you're greeted very nice. You have one of the warmest welcomes in the world. 
you're shown to your table. You may or may not have a reservation, but that's taken care of. You're shown to your table. You're seated to your table. Sometimes the chair is actually pulled up for you. You're seated for the ladies. Napkin is placed on you, and you're wondering like, wow, you know, you're getting this type of treatment that no way you've ever gotten before. But it's all service. It's all customer service. Then comes to the good stuff, the menu, all the specials of the day, or the drink menu, and you're getting excited. Sometimes you peruse the beverage menu, sometimes you peruse the wine menu, or even the food menu, and you're seeing so much different dishes, so much different options, so much different varieties, things that you've not seen in quite a while, or things that you've just heard your fellow um, employer, or employee, or your friend, or your family speaking about. But you're actually here now to get to see it, and to get to experience it. Now, wine. Wine is something that to me, and this is also written in my biography, that determines the difference between casual dining and fine dining. Now, anyone could drink a bottle of wine. Anyone could go by a supermarket, by a side store, by a mini shop, if they have, and purchase a bottle of wine. But what is wine? What are you drinking? It's okay to just open a bottle of wine, anywhere as you might feel, I'm not speaking about Aubrey, but it's okay to open a bottle of wine, pour a glass, and drink it. But what are you tasting? Have you really went full down in depth to this wine? Now, I really don't want to um, act like I'm teaching one of my advanced classes, but I'm just going to give you a bit of in depth. What is wine? Wine is basically um, a fermentation of grape juices. Simple. It's not anything that has to be long and drawn out. Wine is basically a fermentation of juices that comes from grapes. Now, a lot of people say that wine is very similar to beer because of the process which it goes through. It's quite simple to say that wines are made from grapes and beer is made from grains. Usually both of them go through the same fermentation process, the same distilling process, but it's also a bit different. We're not going to go so high now as to say there are a lot of boundaries where you cross now, where you get into different wines and different beers. Because beers are brewed with a lot of different uh, ingredients that are not even used in wines. But the process is basically the same, right? Now, all of us that know about wines, we know at least one or two things. There's a white wine, there's a red wine. Simple. I think everyone should at least know. And then we go a bit deeper to have a rosé wine or blush wine. This one is mostly what the ladies like and prefer because they figure that it's a lot sweeter, right? Now, people might say that wine is something that doesn't interest them. I ask why. Oh, I don't like wine, I don't really drink wine. Okay, why? And it stops there. They cannot ever seem to finish answering that question. If you don't like something, you should have a reason why you don't like it. Have you experienced it before? Has it done something to you that, um, did, did it give you a reaction that you weren't familiar with? Or was it agreeing with your body? Why is it you don't like it? Was it, did it upset your stomach? Did it give you um, a bad hangover if you drank too much the next day? Did it make your mouth taste a bit um, filthy? Why don't you like it? You always have to have some reason behind why you like something or why you don't like something. Now, just let's go back to the restaurant setting where you are sat by your server or by your host or by your hostess and you're given the wine menu. 
Now, some restaurants have a very, very big wine cellar, a very big selection of wines. And other restaurants or hotels might just have, you know, about 20% that size or might half that size. So you're given a wine list, you're looking over this wine list and you're realizing that you're seeing white wines, you're seeing red wines, you're seeing sparkling wines, you're seeing champagnes, you're seeing dessert wines, you're seeing blush and rosé wines, and you're just wondering what are you going to do here? You have no idea. Now one wine might stand out mostly to some individuals. These are the wines that are mostly known to be in the retail stores, the corner shops, um, wines like Zinfandel, wines like Moscato. These are wines that usually stand out for the wine person that, for the wine novice, shall I say, a person that knows nothing at all about wines. Now, this is where the wine sommelier or the wine steward comes in at those establishments. Because you know what you're going to order on the menu. The menu is quite simple. You've got a selection of different choices. You have beef, you have uh, chicken, you might have lamb, you might have different things on the menu which you're familiar with. But you really want to get the full essence of this meal. Now some of these meals are done by very, very, uh, I would use the word here, top-notch chefs. Um, very well educated guys, a kitchen team that would have put all these ingredients together to give you a mind blowing flavor and also a mind blowing taste when you actually go in deep down into these dishes. But what else is there? You now need a nice wine to pair with that meal, to actually bring out the full flavor within this meal, to actually make you feel like you're doing something different for a change. And this is where the wine sommelier comes in. I've met ladies in numerous restaurants that said, oh, they don't like wine, they don't drink wine. Okay, no problem. Tell me, what do you like? Do you like something sweet? Do you like something dry? Do you like something fruity? What it is that you like? Obviously, you have to have a drink or a beverage which you like. So you have to have some sort of characteristic of that beverage which made you to like that beverage. Whether it might be sweet, whether it might have a grape flavor you like, whether it might, uh, you know, not too sweet, just something a little slightly sweet, but also give you a little burning, you know, something similar to that. So a wine sommelier will ask you simple questions. What do you like? Just tell me what do you like? There is always a wine for everyone. Believe it, there is always a wine for everyone. Even for those who don't drink alcohol, there are no alcoholic wines. So never believe that you don't like wine and there is not a wine for you. Wine is something that complements your dinner very, 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 very good. Especially when you get to know a bit about it. When you're speaking about wine, you're speaking about, you're describing wine, you use certain words like tannin. You use certain words like acidity. You use certain words like sweetness. You use certain words like dry. You use certain words like full-bodied, light-bodied. Um, when you're actually discussing the color of wines, their pale wines, their rosé, their wines that has a, a, a slight lime green color, wines that have a champagne color. So these are different words we use when you're discussing wines. So. Sometimes you might hear two wine sommeliers staying up in a restaurant, they're discussing wines, and there's a guest that are looking at them like, we're talking a different language. Because we're talking in the wine guru, should we say. But believe me, it takes a lot of time to get there and to be a wine sommelier of wines. It takes a lot of time to master the art of wines. It takes a lot of time to master the art of wine service of wine pairing, of the correct uh, presentation of wines. So, I mean, I've accepted the invitation to Atlanta to come here to talk a bit about wine. Um, as already stated before, I was the co-host of one of his um, radio shows with the co-founders 
of the Barefoot Wine, which is also a very well-known wine. This wine is in numerous restaurants, numerous bars, numerous hotels. It's also in a lot of retail outlets also, and it's quite inexpensive. It's very, very, very reasonable. And there are a lot of different flavors within that wine. Those wines, for the red wines, when you taste these wines sometimes, you have a strong flavor of blackberry coming out. You have a, a strong flavor of fruitcake coming out. Sometimes you taste a little chocolate in between there. You know, it's just slipping off your tongue. But yet still, you're tasting a bit of ruby in the back. So you're wondering how possibly could all these flavors come together in one bottle of wine. That tastes so nice. I love it. I just love speaking about wine. I love drinking wine. And you must have an open mind when you're drinking the wine. When you take a taste of wine, have an open mind. Think about what's the first thing that comes to your mind. White wines are made of basically two grapes. You have the Chardonnay grape and you have the Sauvignon Blanc grape. Red wines are made of, I would say basically two grapes also, because you have a Merlot and you have a Carabinet. But the white wines, the red wines, sorry, they go a lot further than that. Because then we have wines, Shiraz, you have Malbec, you know, we have Chianti's, which is a little more over the boundary now than just from a Merlot or a Carabinet, which I will not go into right now because it's a, it's a very huge, a very large topic, the topic of wines. So there are now, we come in now to the rosé wines and to the champagnes and to the sparkling wines. Um, there is one, for example, that I would like to talk about that I think comes a lot uh, out of the realm of these wines, which is a uh, very nice, I would call it, I would put it in the category of a sparkling wine because it's not a champagne, Prosecco. I think a lot of us would have heard about Prosecco already. And Prosecco is made of a very unique grape by the name of Gliro. So it is not something that you would find in Chardonnay, uh, in Savion, or in Carabinet, or Merlot. It is very um, standalone, so to say, by itself. And it's also very, very, very unique. So I don't want to go too far into that. We will have a couple of wines afterwards from the same uh, Barefoot. And you could come over, you could have a little taste of these wines, your choice, red or white. And um, a little taste, Greg, taste, taste, <laughs> taste, yeah. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and you can also ask me a couple of questions. So basically, I would like you to anytime you taste a wine, to have a full open mind. What is the first thing you taste? Think about fruits. Think about things like apricots. Think about things like ripe apple. Think about things like gooseberry. Think about things um, uh, like black currant. Think about things like blackberry. These now for the red wines. Think about different spices. Think about chocolate. You know, all of these things are actually components that make up a very, very, very good wine. And when you really go deep down into wine story now, it's a whole different thing altogether. Because wines are made to store at correct temperature, which gives you the flavor that you need to taste and the aromas that comes out of the wine that circulates that you need to taste. These flavors actually goes very good with certain meals. This is why we pair certain dishes with certain wines. All white wines, in certain countries are supposed to be kept at a correct temperature. Now, certain countries are a lot hotter than others, so there are wine fridges that are designed with internal temperatures to ensure that these temperatures are kept. A basic white wine is to be kept at least, um, let's say, between 16 to 18 degrees, and this is Celsius. Obviously, you could do the conversion into Fahrenheit. And a red wine, supposed to be basically kept at room temperature. But sometimes outside is so very hot that room temperature is not room temperature. Sometimes you're inside that same room and you're sweating. You know, you're very, very hot. So you can imagine 
how the bottle of wine is feeling. It's uncomfortable. Yes, it has feelings. It's uncomfortable. You know? So you need to ensure that it cools down a bit. So red wines now are to be kept between um, anywhere between 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. And there's exception there. There's exception of the Shiraz or the Pinot Noir, which is to be kept at least 26 degrees Celsius. Right? Because they are a bit more lighter and they also carry a bit more flavor. Right? So, as I said, I really want to go full in depth of the wines. So just let me close by saying that there is a wine for everyone. Everyone has a liking. There are over, I don't want to say a million wines, but I guess I could say a million wines. Because wines are being produced every year. Wines are being made every year. Um, certain years are actually better than other years. This is where the vintage comes in. When you see a wine and you look at the wine bottle, sometimes you see the year, sometimes you see a 2015, you might see a 1998, you might see a 2001, that is the vintage. That is the actual year that those grapes were actually harvested in the, in, in, the, um, in the vineyard for the process to start to have these grapes made. Right? So never believe that there is no wine for you. Anytime you go dining and you go to a restaurant or you go to a bar and you see the wine list, you know, just ask the barman or if there's a wine sommelier, just a little taste. A good wine sommelier or a good barman or a good wine steward should always be able to present the customer with a little taste and be able to give a little background and talk a little bit. It's not only product knowledge, but it's also upselling. Because if you could speak to your customer, very fluent and very knowledgeable you could guarantee at least 93 percent of the time you're going to get a sale at least 93 percent of the time as long as you put over yourself and adapt to the situation at least you're going to get a sale 93 percent of the time okay so i'll just leave you with a bit uh, before we get into any wine tasting after you could come you could taste you could ask me any questions i'm definitely going to ask you questions also but just remember to keep an open mind and think fruit wise that's the first thing that you should start off as a person that wants to get into wines that might like wines but just keep your mind open to any single fruits any flavors that you might think of and believe me 99 percent of the time that flavor is in that wine thank you very much Woo!